My name is Andy Galpin. I live in Orange County, California, and I'm a full-time professor and research scientist. I've been interested in studying human performance since as long as I knew what human performance was. I, I grew up as a, what I call a mediocre athlete, so I was good enough to where understanding how to train better and eat better improved my performance, but I wasn't so good that it didn't matter. So one of the things that I do in addition to all of our research is I work directly with athletes occasionally, primarily from combat sports or Olympic weightlifting. What reigns central to all these athletes is they have to um, be in a certain weight class. So the vast majority of people I work with have that issue to work with. So weight cutting is a, is a big part of what I manage. And the definition of weight cutting can differ. So like an Olympic weightlifter might weight cut or cut a kilo or two. Some of my fighters might cut 10 or 12 or more kilos. And so those are kind of different terms. But what's really clear about it is you have to manage two things, uh, the hydration status and then the muscle glycogen. And the glycogen is a fancy way of saying the carbohydrates are the sugar we store in our muscle. And that's particularly important for high power performance. There's a major problem with restoring performance after a weight cut, no doubt about it. And if we take advice from people who uh, maybe adapt in weight cutting from physique or aesthetic sports, the literal goal of the whole weight cut is different. And that's one of the things we have to highlight. I get really irritated when, with folks, just like I would never, ever give advice to a physique person about how to do the weight cut because their definition of weight cut is different. Their weight cut is, you know, a 12 week process. Now we certainly start to lose fat in our athletes, our fighters and our lifters, as far as we need to as well. But literally, if you think about all the stuff that differs, um, the physique athlete will compete when they're on stage, when they feel the physical worst. An athlete has to do the exact opposite. You're weight cutting in physique sports to get a physical appearance. The scale is, is irrelevant. And I've, sometimes there's weight classes or things, but, but they're really crude, right? It's like under six feet, over six feet, right? You're not, the, the number isn't a huge issue. In my sport, if you're off by a pound, you lose 20% of your money. It's a huge freaking deal. Uh, you're off by more than that, you lose 50% of your purse. In fact, I have one particular athlete right now who for every pound he misses by, it could be up to a $75,000 fine. So you have, we have 24 to 36 hours, sometimes two hours in the case of weightlifting to recover. So the entire process is different because the outcome is freaking different. So the tricks and tips that you can use or I can use wouldn't work for a physique athlete or the things that you would do for your physique athletes might kill our performance because you don't have to worry about getting on fucking stage the next day. Right? or getting on your performance the next day, or getting punched in the face. The other thing we have to worry about in combat sports are things like brain hydration. Doesn't matter, you've got plenty of time to rehydrate your brain if you're on stage in a bikini. Right? I have to consider that. So what I can do pre and what I do post has to be optimized and get the brain rehydrated as fast as possible. So you just need to be careful and, and don't, just don't give advice to people in those areas if you don't know what you're doing. I've just seen a lot of comments from people in that world of like, oh, I've seen these protocols in combat sport athletes and they don't know what they're doing. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we have a good idea. Now, some people are stupid, but just because you look at it and you're like, oh, I would never do that for my physique thing. Well, I hope not, because the, the outcome goals are entirely different. So, so even at the high level like the UFC, um, this issue is still a problem because we don't have enough people with the solid nutrition background. So you see a lot of professional athletes, whether they're powerlifters, weightlifters, jiu-jitsu, uh, wrestlers, they don't have anybody behind them. They don't have any help. At the highest, highest levels, you might have a, a particular coach. And there's a couple of good people out there. But the vast majority of these, these combat sport athletes, they have nobody. So they're relying on Instagram influencers, they're relying on people in the gym. They're relying on their friend. They're relying on, yeah, I know a guy who does this. Yeah, this girl wants to do this thing. She knows about weight cutting. Um, the vast majority are actually doing that. So yeah, we, I'm telling you, this thing, the things I've seen backstage in, in, at a UFC event, countless times I'm like, oh my God, like you hired this guy because it, what he looked like with his shirt off. That this is not a good idea. Like this is the first person's time ever doing this with an athlete or they're, they're like, really bad. So no, we, we, we see it more often than not. There's in fact, I would say the opposite. There's only a few of us um, that are working with UFC level fighters or Olympic level, like Olympic on the world teams, on the Olympic teams, weightlifting. There's only a few of us to do it. Um, doesn't mean we're all right. And it doesn't mean anyone who's not us isn't right, but it's squirrely. It's real squirrely. Anytime someone has a suboptimal weight cut or what we call reload. So this is the rehydration refeeding process you're gonna have a whole host of risks pop up. Number one is performance. You might just not perform 
as optimally as possible, or you might perform poorly. And those are slightly separate, but both a real, real, real problem. That's the easy one. That's the lowest issue we have to concern with. Higher up, that injury rate just go way up, particularly concussion rates. So if you fail to properly rehydrate the brain, our risk of concussion and the severity of those concussions goes dramatically up. And that's, uh, that's something that any athlete should be very, very concerned with. Even if you are, say, in like jiu-jitsu or wrestling, where there's no direct head contact per se, you're still getting your head smacked a lot. And so your chances of something severe happening, um, your brain, your decision making, your executive function, if that's compromised, you're not going to make smart choices. Uh, you're not going to, you know, perform as possible because you're not going to do things correctly and your decision making will be compromised. So those are a small list. Um, you have things um, that are more rare like uh, slight kidney failure, uh, rhabdo can kick in. Um, you have a lysing of cells, so this is a bursting of cells because they're overhydrated too quickly and those can run into problems. Those are more rare, but the typical ones are simply you gassed out or your legs got really, really, really heavy. Uh, you got diarrhea which furthered the problem, made it worse. Um, your stomach got really upset, gurgly, awful, and or worst case, um, you got hit with a shot that normally doesn't hurt that bad and your lights went out, or the, and then out, when they, they went out really bad. So those are all the problems with a, a poorly managed wake up rehydration.